Hi everyone, it's Chris back in my cider shed with some more cider to try. And it's another one from Guatkins that Arthur gave me three samples to try when I was there the other day at Guatkins. And in the last video we tried the, what was it called, the Silly U, which was the dry cider, dry cider, which I mean... Uh, I think maybe five years ago I thought it was dry. No, I didn't think it was dry. I thought it was pushing on to like medium. There was sweetness to it. You know, it was it was medium dry at best. Probably sweeter than that. But I still quite liked it. I didn't feel it was as good as the original blend because I think this is a stonk insider. But I still thought it was a really solid cider that I would quite happily drink on a very hot day. But it's not a very hot day. So let's draw a veil over that. Okay, so what we're going to try today was something a bit more special and unusual, I want to say. Uh, it's something that they've never had before. They've just started doing it. And he gave it to me to try, which is very kind of him. And it is this. Guatkin Rum Barrel Cider. So how about that? So it's uh, one of their ciders which has been aged in a rum barrel. Uh, still cider, this one, unfiltered, as you can see. Uh, most of the stuff in their bottles they will filter. But actually this one is unfiltered, which is cool. cool. I kind of like that. It's a proper still cider that they've used for this. I don't know what... what uh, I think I asked him what the base cider was. And I think he said it was Michelin Dabinet. He thought the blend was for this particular cider. So that's interesting. I don't think it says on the bottle. We'll, we'll have a read of the bottle in a second. Ingredients. Apple juice. Pet, pure sugar. Rum barrel. Trace. Okay. And it is 7.5%. Okay. Screw cap. Because it's not... Um, doesn't, it's not fizzy. Uh, so what does it say on this uh, bottle then? Rum barrel cider is based on the old link between land and sea, where farmers would trade their produce with sailors for recently emptied rum casks. These casks were filled with their freshly pressed juice to create an extra special full-bodied tipple, combining the taste of sweet apple cider and dark spirit rum. Okay, cool. Not sure if that's true. If that's factual, if that's actually something that did happen, possibly. Uh, not many ports that close to uh, Abidor. Uh, it's quite, it's kind of landlocked to some degree. But I guess it's not too far to the South Wales coast and ports there. Bristol, Bristol, you know, yeah, okay. Anyway, so let's open it and let's try it. Now, I have an issue sometimes with things that are aged in barrels, which I've had other things in. My issue is, often... In my experience, there's been too much of the residual, whatever it happens to be, spirit or whatever, in the barrel. Uh, and that's actually started to mask the flavour of, say, that's in, in this instance, the cider that you put into it. Uh, I think I've mentioned before about imperial stouts that were put into like bourbon barrels. And they end up tasting so much of bourbon, you can't actually taste the stout. So what's the point in that? What's the point in that? I think you should complement it and season it. You shouldn't smother it. OK. Uh, the two things should work together. Um, I'm, I'm, I haven't tried this yet, so I don't know if that's the case. Um, I took the, the the foil bit off the top just for ease of opening, but I haven't actually tried it. Uh, so I don't know how much rum is actually in here. So it'll be interesting to see if I feel it sits comfortably with me, or if I feel that it's it's there's too much rum in there. And let's 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 try and find out. Let's pour it out. So it's still, so there isn't going to be any sparkle. So have to think about that. You can look at the colour though, unfiltered. Um, and again, that great amber colour you get with with. With them cooking, I think I said in the last film, I, I seem to let them sit and brown the apples because crazy, they don't have get a great amber colour in them. They're really good, really beautiful to look at. Like their ciders. Okay, so still unfiltered, nice dark amber. Let's smell it. Okay, there is rum in this. Fact, there is rum in this. It's obvious, but I can't get the side. I can get side as well. I can get like a, like a slight acidity from the cider and they're going to that kind of kind of a baked apple character from the cider. But yeah, there's almost a of like brown sugar, but I suspect that's coming from the rum rather like Demerara kind of smell, which I think is coming from the rum rather than the cider. Yeah, OK, OK, let's see, let's see, let's give it a test. Cheers. Okay, this is a super sweet cider. First off the bat, this is a super sweet cider. If you don't like sweet ciders, do not get this. It is a dessert, this, I would think. I mean, it tastes to me a lot like the golden... Where's it gone? Oh, God, there we go. Tastes like their Golden Valley. The Golden Valley, which is their sweet cider, which is super sweet, which actually I've used for mulling. It's great for mulling. 
I think for mulling, sweet ciders are great. But for general drinking, you can't drink a lot of it because it is sweet. It is sweet. And this is quite a hefty portion. I mean, that's almost like a perfect size portion, I would say, for this. The rum is definitely there. You can't miss it. But it's actually, it's not too bad. It's not too overpowering. It's not too overpowering. It is quite balanced. Let me have a little bit more. Subtle astringency on the on the teeth, the soft tannin. No tannin on the back end, but it has got, you know, it's texture in the mouth. There is indeed, there's a lot of sugar. It tastes like, yeah, brown sugar. There's a very much a flavour of brown sugar about this. Absolutely. Um, but there's definitely some acidity. It is mouth watering. Feels like the hint of like lime, lime. There's a lime element to the acidity. I feel. Um, I quite like more acidity to balance the sweetness. To be honest with you. Um, but actually, the rum's not too bad. It's actually balanced. It's there, but you can. It's not smothering it. For me, actually, the problem is it's just a little bit too sweet, and I like sweet. Um, this is a dessert. This is definitely a dessert. It's something to have at the end of a meal, and in small portions like this, I would suggest. Um, I'm trying to think it would go with like cheese, like salty, because it's like blue cheese, high in salt. It goes great with sweet things like this. Great with sweet things like this. But I'm wondering if the rum character would be a bit confusing with cheese. Um, I feel like it might be. Rum and cheese? Yeah, I don't know. Something about just saying that phrase, rum and cheese, makes me go, yeah, I don't know about that. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Actually though, you know what? Christmas, at the end of a meal, if you want something sweet, but you don't want a heavy dessert, I reckon that would do the trick, actually. I think that would do the trick. And if you've got a sweet tooth, no problem. No problem. Okay, interesting. Interesting. I have to think about it. I have to think about it. Because I have a sweet tooth, so I don't mind. I know lots of people don't. So I'm trying to think in a more general sense as to how people might react to this. Um, yeah, it would be divisive. It would be too sweet for some. For others, I think it would be fine in, in you know, reasonable-sized portions. Okay, that was interesting. And I very much appreciate the fact that Arthur gave, gave it to me to try. Very generous. We've got one more to do, and it is, uh, it's a sweet cider, I think. It's like the sweet, it's a, it's the sibling to the silly you. I think it's called No Bull, and I think it's a sweet version of that. It's medium or sweet, I forget which. Anyway, we'll try that one in the next video. All right, guys, thanks once again for joining me. I hope you will join me again for that next video. And until then, cheers.